Welcome to the Carroll County Historical Society's 16th Annual Antiques and Collectibles Appraisal Day. I'm Jennifer Munch, the chair of this year's event. We are coming to you this year from the South Carroll Swim Club. This is a service that the Historical Society provides to the community where people can bring items that they've collected or they may have inherited that they'd like to know a little bit more about. Our volunteer appraisers will give them an idea of the history of the item, its significance, and its value. We couldn't do this if without the support of our many sponsors. Our gold sponsors this year are Lehigh Cement Company, M&T Bank, and New Windsor State Bank. We also wish to thank our silver sponsors and our bronze sponsors and our many advertisers for our program book. We look forward to an exciting day with a lot of interesting items. Lynette Brewer is going to take you around and let you see some of these items and hear what the appraisers have to say about them. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. James Leitner, who's the president of the Historical Society Board. Before Lynette begins her several interviews with uh, our uh, clients this morning, uh, bringing their interesting items to be appraised, uh, I want to give a special thanks for uh, the expert appraisers who have given their day and their expertise to give value to all the various things that will pass through these doors today. Uh, ten in number, they, many of them have been with us a number of years. Uh, we, as I said, we're in our 16th year and many of them have been with us almost that entire time. Some others are new and uh, we're always looking for uh, new expertise that will cover an uh, even broader aspect of many of the objects that our uh, friends bring in for appraisal every year. I also have to thank our 25 volunteers from the society, as well as our staff, all of whom have given at least part of their day to be here to make this whole event work. Uh, it's, it's always a fun event, but it takes a lot of effort and work to make it all uh, work for us uh, as a significant fundraiser for the society. Before I turn it over to uh, the, our executive director, I just want to give a little bit of a promo for a couple of things that are coming up sponsored by the Historical Society. One is a special exhibit at Emerald Hill beginning or opening on September the 24th and su two successive Saturdays afterward. It's called Yearning to Breathe Free, Westminster's Greek Community. Uh, and uh, there should be an interesting uh, display of, of artifacts and so forth from our very large and uh, significant Greek community in the Westminster area. The other is uh, Pumpkin Palooza. And this is going to be a new event that the Historical Society is sponsoring. Uh, it uh, is going to be on Saturday, uh, October 15th, 2016, from 2 to 6 at Emerald Hill. It should be a grand afternoon of pumpkin carving, pumpkin drawing for the kids, a lecture on the history of pumpkins, and uh, Halloween. Uh, it should be an interesting afternoon. We've never done anything like this before, and we're hoping that this will be of popularity to the community at large. So put it on your calendar. October the 15th from 2 to 6 at Emerald Hill. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you our executive director, Dr. Gaynard ba Davis, who is going to tell you a little bit more about the society. Hello, my name is Gaynard Davis, and I am very pleased to be able to uh, invite you to our 16th annual um, Antiques and Collectibles Appraisal Day. The Historical Society was founded in 1939 to preserve the home of Mary Shellman, one of the major constituents or one of the most important people in Westminster and Carroll County. And so for the past 76 years, we've been preserving the history of the people, places, and events that were important to Carroll County and putting them within the context of the greater American experience. We have about 35,000 objects in our collection. Of those, 9,000 are three-dimensional objects and of great importance is our textile collection, our furniture collection, and our ceramics collection. But in addition, we have 25,000 documents that are, include diaries, manuscripts, books, 
and another 5,000 photographs that tell the stories of Carroll County and its people, places, and events. It also, it's our job to put that history and those stories within the context of the greater American experience. So I hope you will come and visit us. And I would like to say that it would be great if before you throw something away, you think about us and come to us and bring those things because you never know what is important to telling the history. It doesn't have to be just the 1670s, it can be the 1770s, the 1870s, and 2007. So think about history as being continuum and that we are here to preserve and tell the stories of Carroll County. A lot of them end up going to England because the, the English were fascinated with our uh, We're looking at a beautiful old clock, and I'm sure it has a family history behind it, so we're going to find out, okay? Can you tell us um, what the family history is with this beautiful old clock? This was my grandmother, grandmother's clock, and I remember as a little girl watching her wind it every night before bed, and when she passed away, I think five years ago, I got it, and um, I know that she was one of 13 children and her father was a pastor in a church and they made records, the Raleys in Pennsylvania. Um, I believe that pastors receive these as gifts is what I was told, but the only thing I know is it's probably about 1890s really? area, era. Wow. But how, how old was your grandmother when she passed? She was 92, five years ago maybe. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that is beautiful, and you said it still works? It does work perfectly, and it chimes at the hour and the half hour, and it's, be it's beautiful. It will run. It keeps perfect time. Perfect time. I paid a guy to uh, come out and tell me how to run it, <laughs> and that you have to wind both sides. Um, unfortunately, he told me he would send me the pedestal and he never did, so I don't have that, but it does keep precise, perfect time. The clock market is struggling right now, but let's see. <laughs> so I just appraised an estate for a gentleman who had 450 of those mantel clocks, I guess. Most are selling right now for about 50 to 100 bucks. I'll never sell. I just yeah. wanted to know the history. I, is it a, par it's a parlor clock? It's a parlor clock. You'll okay. be sitting you know on a mantel. Uh, probably about 1880 is when they were made. Okay. Now, it would have a model number. Most of the clocks during that time would have a name attached to it. So I'd have to do some research to find out what the name is. Or Gilbert Company uh, came about at around 1850. Good and they were out of Connecticut. I think Winstead, Connecticut is where they were located. Um, it's a beautiful clock. He had a specialty of uh, widely copied he was a maker of amusing double action tin mechanicals. And this we think is, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Ivrone, was that how you, Ivrone, which is, would be a topper or a drunk. And we are assuming he's a drunk because he's got that little bottle. <laughs> and he still works and he does look drunk when he, when he, when he goes. He's, so that's a good first step. That's so cool. Okay. Look at it drinking. He is quite interesting. We're trying to find out the value. Oh no, he got oh, so no. drunk he lost his bottle. <laughs> the drunk dropped his bottle. He sure did. But 
if I were guessing, okay, and, and given condition, and ever, I'd say three to five hundred. That's that's, but that's an, that is um, a, 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 an educated guess. Now, can I take this out? Certainly. Okay. Is there a signature on the front? So is it uh, P I E T R R A S? I believe so. All right. So let's. So what I'm going to do is to we subscribe to an art database. Okay. Um, that's probably it, it's one of the major ones, and usually if a, if they're if if the person is quote a recognized artist. Um, and there's any of his or her things have sold at auction. This gives me everything that sold at auction probably in the last 25 years from all, from all over the world. So the woman who just had a painting here, even though the artist was American, there were only three sales records and they were all from auction galleries in Europe. So who knows? So. I'm not sure um, exactly um, who this particular person is, but here's what I can tell you, and it's um, it's it's not good news. So, for as as a colleague of mine um, who was doing an. Uh, um, He's an auctioneer in North Carolina. Um, was doing an art presentation, and we're talking about subject matters, and and it, the way he put it was that in today's market, cows or sheep or whatever are death. Okay. In other words, that's that is, um, and and he didn't mean it to be. Sarcastic, but he, but what he was saying is, landscapes, especially like English landscapes, whatever, um, and they're they're dark in the background and so on. They, uh, it's it's just not in in favor right now. So, um, having having said that, and knowing you know nothing else about this painting, it the the quality looks okay to me um, but not real okay okay it's it's better than I could do but it's it's not Michelangelo okay so just without knowing more about this guy and also not knowing how um, this painting, if it were cleaned up, um, it might brighten substantially. You know, I don't know. The restorer could tell you that. But r right now, I would say it's probably in the two to four hundred range. Okay. That's great. Okay. I know you didn't. I. <laughs> right, so. Uh, this is now. This came with when I bought the painting. Uh, at the auction that they had repaired it back um, in the lower corner here. So I thought that it was wise to bring that today as well so that you could um, easily understand that there has been some damage, but it had been repaired. Really nice that they disclosed that to you. Uh, exactly. And, and hopefully you knew that before you bought it. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So let's see. How good. So was this also, was that at the same auction? A no, different this is a different auction. Okay.
And this is even on the assumption that um, that we have the name correct. In other words, that exactly. yes. you know, it may not be Rolando. And also, partially under the frame is um, oh, yeah. is a date. And oh, okay, gotcha. Why, so that would be yeah, why right. it's under the frame. Uh, but, but, um, well, that could also. No. It did light before. Yep. I'm sorry. Mind if I ask what you paid for at all? Uh, this was $325 I paid for this. Yeah. And. I would say that it would be in the three to six hundred range, and would have been more um, if it hadn't had the repair to it. Um, and to your point about the other lady's painting, is that this is really in a very nice frame. And um, again, what what you look for is well, and that that may be a repair. I don't know, but a lot of times. It's easy for part of the gilt to right, come off. Right. Um, it's also possible um, and not very difficult for a good restorer to make that up so right, you'd never, right. mm -hmm. never know it. Um, but, you know, again, without knowing who this person is supposed to represent, um, the, the, it's better that the subject matter is um, a dead white girl as opposed to a dead white man okay in the in the in the order of of best what you want is children okay and better yet children with dogs in other words if you're looking at pictures of of uh that are portraits okay so you know, like you go in and you'll see, you go into some university or whatever, and you'll see, you know, oil paintings of all these guys who were president and so on. And, um, you know, it's probably worth the uh, amount of the materials to make the painting. So, um, anyways. Yeah. Um, I've tried to, you know, be uh, the investigative reporter, I think you know, done a good job. Um, and at least at that point I can, you know, make some assessment and, you know, hopefully bring some more to the table to you. And unfortunately, I'm in the same boat as you. I couldn't. The clock? Um, the, the clock came out of a uh, house that we moved into. The family um, had moved to Florida. They were in their 80s and they left this old clock behind. And we, we tried to do a little research on it. Uh, the company's Warmink and we know it's a Dutch uh, clock. Um, and it's a, it was a family clock business that um, has been ex in existence for 60 or 70 years. And they ceased operations back in the 80s, I believe. So there's no more being produced. Um, the limited research uh, that I did do on the internet um, haven't found anything like this clock. Uh, they did make a lot of mantle clocks. Um, so, uh, so we just thought we'd bring it and see what it's worth, if anything. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yes. You're interested to see what the appraiser says. Absolutely. Okay, All right, thank you very much. And where did these canes come from? They came from Lewis McLean, who was a partner of the Wells Fargo. And I got them from my grandmother's estate when the thing, house was broken up. I got the, claim, the canes, and I wanted, she had a brother, Lewis, and I'd like to know whether they belonged to her father or the brother or 
What somebody can, anyone can tell me. They've got the initials yeah. on them. Do we know how old they are? That's what we're trying to figure out. <laughs> 1860s. Uh, yeah, about, yeah. The 1860s? With a, <laughs> with a connection to Wells Fargo, huh? Yeah, he, uh, Lewis McLean was a partner that started Wells Fargo, and I believe that was my grandmother's father, and she had a brother named Lewis McLean, and I don't know whether the Canes were her father's or her brother's or whether there's any story to them, and it was suggested that I get somebody, an antique person, to look at them. So when the Historical Society had this day, I thought I'd bring them up and see. Good idea, see. the Cane Cane song. <laughs> Let me see the one there with the, what's that, an alligator on there? It's fascinating. Isn't that neat? And you see the initials are, this is getting loose up here. Okay, so we found it. There we go. Do you see the initials? Here, yeah. On the other side. On the other side. Yeah, L. MCL, Lewis McLean. But I like this. That's why I brought it. Lewis McLean was a very famous man in American history. Um, he was uh, from Wilmington, Newcastle, Delaware, um, originally, and Baltimore. Uh, he was a veteran of the War of 1812, a member of the Federalist Party, and then later the Democratic Party. He was in Congress. Uh, as a U.S. Senator from Delaware. Uh, then he was U.S. Secretary of the Treasury and U.S. Secretary of State to the United Kingdom. He was President of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad and he was a member of Andrew Jackson's cabinet. So you're talking about a very, very famous man here from your family. Um, he was born in 1786 and died in 1857. So these two canes that belonged to him would have certainly preceded his death in 1857. And given the nature of this ivory handle cane and the silver band and the engraving, I would date this probably to about 1830 or 40. And this one slightly later, maybe 1840 to 45. Um, but Lois McLean was quite the guy. Um, and these, and of course, who they belong to increases their, their value a great deal. So a plain ivory handled cane like this from about uh, the 1830s or 40s would typically bring about 250 to 275 dollars. Uh, a, a alligator carved cane like this about the same. But with the Lewis McLean collection um, and connection and history that launches these into a whole different stratosphere of price. Uh, because of his fame and fortune and notoriety in the United States government, uh, I would say that the ivory handle cane with his name spelled out um, is probably worth $2,500 to $3,500. I'm not intending to sell a wow. and, and then this one a little less, so about $1,500 for the one with his, his initials. If I saw this cane at a flea market with just those initials, they have no connection whatsoever to anyone, really. So the fact that it's associated with this cane with his full name spelled out, you know, the, the two canes need to be married together forever because this one identifies this one. But without this one, this could be a cup, it would just be worth a couple of hundred dollars without the history. So, um, I think it's wonderful. I, you know, this is really quite a rare item, and because I'm the director of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Museum in Baltimore, and he was a president of the B and O, wow. this means a great deal to me to wonderful. be able to see these things. Yeah, that is really great. Yeah. It's an old Bible. And it was um, broken, the glass was broken, the frame was broken, and a friend of mine put it in, an, in this frame, which is still kind of junky. But I have another friend who went to Maryland Institute, and she took it out of the frame to take a look at it. And this all bleeds through like a real marker was used to draw it. 
and it's signed and dated by Picasso. So I don't know if it's a real sketch that he would have done or not. And that's what I'd like to find out. What do we do? You're not carrying any weapons with you, are you? <laughs> Nothing? I don't have to worry? <laughs> okay. This, Look at that. This he is, found it. Yeah, this, this is a Don Quixote. That is this piece. Right. This is a reproduction. Um, and um, which is not a dirty word. It just mm -hmm. means it is, it is not the um, original. And there will actually be, I don't know if this is the same, he did a number of Don Quixote um, pieces. Um, so here's, here's another one that, that is, you know, uh, a reproduction. This, this, so this image is, appears um, a lot. Right, I've seen it many times. Right. So, um, if we were, you know, be, um, you know, doing, um, you know, a real appraisal, a written report and so on, I'd want to know where the original one is, you know, what museum and so on and so forth. I'd, I'd want to know what medium, what, what, what colors, what textures were used when it was created, et cetera. Um, but um, if I'm wrong, you take me out to dinner, but um, I, I, I think that it's 99% sure that it is a copy and just decorative. Okay, but why would it have bled through the paper? I don't know the method that was used yeah. to uh, to make it. I've seen that happen before. Mm. It can happen. It can be just the quality of the paper, the quality of the materials, oh, okay. what it was exposed to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a lot of different things other than, well, it wouldn't have bled if it, unless it were the original. Right. And that, so that's not the case. Okay. Thanks. Sorry, I couldn't give yes. you better news. That's okay. But um, it's uh, it's not likely. Most of us don't have uh, original Picassos. Right. Um, I kind of figured that. If I, I'd have to tell you, if I had two or three, I probably wouldn't be here <laughs> today. I'd probably be on a beach somewhere. Yes, that's where I was hoping to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the cards, huh? Thank you. Here, let Thank me give you. All of that big hat was in this little tiny bag. Where did you get this? It's been in the family. <laughs> years and years. I I have no idea how old it is or where it came from. And you wear it every time you go shopping? No. Right? <laughs> no. <laughs> that is so cool. We love it. Yeah, and the other thing you brought was this neat little uh, buggy that, that uh, what's it made of? Metal? Yeah, it's an early tinware piece, and uh, we concluded from, from looking at it that it's probably around 1900. It's, uh, as we say in the trade, it shows some good wear. The paint's chipping off a little bit, but it's been well played with over the years. The wheels and the handle are all still intact, although a little bit bent. And in today's market, we feel the value of it is around $50. No, we're just getting to we that. We need that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for sharing that.